broken world. Hello, my name is Owen Nielsen. I'm the director of Great Basin Museum in Delta, Utah. And we're here to investigate some of the structure and history of the Canyon Range Mountains. Those are the mountains that you see directly behind me. And they're an excellent source of mountain building in this part of the country. And that's why we're here. But before we start discussing the structure, let, let me talk for just a minute about the history of this area. And let's go back a long, long time. Let's go back 1.2 billion years ago. And at that time, Utah was part of a supercontinent called the Rodinian Supercontinent. And uh, if, if we could be here on this very spot 1.2 billion years ago and look off to the west, off to this direction, and it was a clear day, we would probably be able to see rocks that would later become Antarctica. In other words, the Antarctic continent was over there. In between was a strip of water, and actually what that was, was a rift valley in the process of formation. That rift valley was moving Antarctica away from the North American plate uh, in the process of taking it where it is today. But it many, many millions of years to, for it to get there. Now this, these rocks here and these mountains are a classic example of overthrust tectonic activity. Tectonic refers to the movement of rocks. And this movement consisted of two different events, uh, or two different parts. One part was the lateral movement. And geologists believe that the rocks that are here now originated over 60 miles to the west of us and were pushed laterally for that enormous distance. And in the process, not only were they moved, but they were buried, heated, and folded. The, the fold assumed a, a horseshoe type shape. And the, if we could look at this mountain range in cross section, the horseshoe would have the two ends pointed up towards the top. And we call that an overthrust because it places older rocks on top of younger rocks. Now all this movement was caused by a collision between the North American plate and the Farallon plate over in the area over in the region of California or western Nevada. Now the rocks that were here and are here now was part of the North American plate. The Phaleron plate was subducted. It went into the earth and disappeared. Now the collision of these plates caused what geologists call the severe orogeny. Orogeny just means mountain building event. And this occurred between 70 and 130 million years ago throughout most of the Cretaceous period. The range as we see it today, the basic structure was laid during those Cretaceous thrusting events, but most of the structure we see today is actually the result of later tectonic activity that occurred later on during the tertiary. Now the rocks, let's look at some of the rocks that we have here. They're quite interesting. And we'll start out with these, these kind of brownish, white, cream colored rocks. They're quite attractive, I think. This is our oldest rock in this area. It's called the Caddy Canyon Quartzite. It's 700 million years old. Now these rocks are found directly in front of me on that little knoll that you see back in front of me. Now quartzite started out as sand. This was a seashore 
when these rocks were originally laid down, then they were buried and became pressure and heat treated, metamorphosized, and became what we call quartzite. Now the, the next rock that we have, a little bit younger, is this beautiful purple rock. And I think this is the most attractive rock in this mountain range. It's called the Mutual Formation, 585 million years old. And the Mutual Formation is these rocks you see behind me. They make up most of the west facing slope of this range and give it this beautiful purplish color. Very beautiful, very interesting. The next rock we come to is the Prospect Mountain Quartzite. And this rock is uh, kind of a more pinkish color. It's very attractive too. And since all these are quartzites, they all started out as sand on a seashore and then were heat and pressure treated to become quartzite. This rock is found up the valley, about a quarter of a mile. It's a pretty large formation, covers quite a bit of area. And by this time we're firmly into the Cambrium. This is the bottom Cambrium. The Mutual and Caddy Canyon quartz sites are in the pre-Cambrium. After the Mutual, there's a formation called the Pioch Formation, which I don't have any samples of, but it's uh, where we find the first fossils. Now, this rock here is very interesting. This is perhaps the most interesting rock in this range. This is conglomerate. It's called the Canyon Range Conglomerate. And this is uh, quite a bit more recent than the other rocks I showed you. This rock was laid down just a little bit east of here during the Cretaceous period. And it comes from a huge, very tall mountain range that existed west of here approximately on the Utah-Nevada border. That's where the hinge line of this huge mountain range was. And it may have been Himalayan in proportion. These mountains were very high, and we know that because boulders came off these mountains the size of houses. Very fascinating. And uh, these rocks are much smaller, but that's because we couldn't carry bigger ones down to the camera site here. Um, Another interesting thing about this formation is, is the geologic story that it tells us. Uh, the formation that came after this Canyon Range conglomerate was called the North Horn Formation. It was about 60 million years ago. No, it was about 66 million years ago. And the rocks are much smaller in it. And then after that came the Flagstaff Formation. And that's the formation that was 60 million years ago, and it was mostly sand. So here we see over a 40 million year period, the strata coming off these mountains, going from huge boulders to small boulders to sand. These were the erosion products. And so what that's telling us geologically is that mountain was in the process of disappearing. In 40 million years, we have a possibly Himalayan sized mountain that disappeared, eroded away. That's the power of erosion. Now isn't that fascinating? I never get tired of telling people about the Canyon Range conglomerate and the story behind it. In fact, I'm so enthused about it right now, I think I'll walk on up this valley and take another look at those fascinating rocks. Thank you for your time.